Well, good morning. Back to 444 again. I'm not going to wait another hour and 11 minutes. The title for today is Nasara, in parentheses, Gesara, Our Visions of a Better World. Recent threads on my videos have included many comments in regard to Nasara. Is it real? The national or global economic stabil stabilization or security and recovery act oops, I forgot the why and recovery um, it as I see it is a vision to address the serious problems humanity faces in a world run by corporate criminals in high places since I first heard about it in the early months of the 21st century I have supported it in principle there are those who say it is a real bill passed in the U.S. Congress and signed into law by then-President Clinton. Others say it is a scam. I'd like to see humanity grab hold of the ideals expressed in this era and work together to get it implemented ASAP. That's as soon as possible for those who, for whom English may not be the first language. Anyway. Nasara, whether it's real or not, the, the claim of those who, who say it's real say that it was signed into law by Bill Clinton, but, listen, he was forced by the U.S. SEALs to sign it. Well, any contract or bill or anything where a coercion or threat or force is used to obtain the agreement is invalid. On its face, right off the bat, no contract is a valid contract if there is any kind of threat, any kind of, uh, of coercion or manipulation or deception involved in the act that's being done. You cannot create a contract by force. It's unlawful to do so. That's just common sense. Common sense, unlawful. How can you make me agree to something that I don't want to agree, and I'm only agreeing because I don't want you to hurt me? <laughs> That's a very simple matter for me. Now, what are some of the, the benefits if Nasara were passed? What are the principles that are involved in Nasara? One of them is currency must be backed by actual precious metals or actual commodities. Try quite honestly, the way it's backed now is by stolen value, the value that's 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 in the people themselves to create and to um, labor and make things, to create and labor. It's 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 our efforts, human efforts that create all value. Even precious metals don't do that. But the principles of this are to, instead of it being a currency that's backed by nothing at all, absolutely nothing at all, just a fictional fiat currency, this is a currency backed by actual precious metals. Income tax in the United States, the income tax laws that came following the Federal Reserve Act in 1913, both of those acts are unlawful acts. Income is not to be taxed. No tax, no tax can be made like that according to the Constitution. Now, one of the other principles is forgiveness of bank mortgages and loans, including student loans. Why? Because all of those loans are fraudulent. All commercial loans are fraudulent loans. They are fraudulent because information is withheld as to what is actually taking place. What is actually taking place is the alleged borrower is actually lending the bank a promissory note that they are going to labor and create wealth. Because they are willing to labor and create wealth or to create money, that promissory note is a negotiable instrument that has the value. Here's somebody that's saying, I'm going to work to produce. And that has value. 
the bank takes that promissory note and deposits it in their own account as an asset. They then take it from being a loan and securitize it. It's no longer a debt instrument. Did you just hear me, what I said? It's no longer a debt instrument. It's a security that is traded and multiplied so that a $100,000 mortgage, for example, becomes a minimum of a million dollars. Now, they have, since the Clinton era, they have played footloose and fancy free with the fractional reserve requirements of, of 10 of 10 percent on deposit. Some suggest that they've even gone as high as 50 times instead of just 10 times the face value of the amount. That's where all of our uh, all of our what do they call it? The um, <laughs> I forgot the word. Uh, not collateral. Um, all of our sec I, I can't remember the word. But anyway, that's where all of these this money keeps keeps growing and growing and growing, and they're, they're derivatives. All of the derivatives that grow from this expansion of the monetary system, uh, that's all fictional in the sense that they're just creating it out of nothing. But then again, it's potential. So everything can be created out of nothing, in a sense. And that's, in fact, all of creation, all physical creation is out of nothing because they tell us that matter is not real. It's only energy moving. And when it's moving slow enough, it appears as matter. When it's moving too fast, you don't see it at all. It becomes invisible. Credit card debt is also erased for the same reason. They actually create that money. When you sign that thing, That if, if you get a a credit limit of 5000 or 25000 or whatever you get a credit limit on, that's how much money is put into the system because of your acceptance of that credit. But who is the creditor? You are actually the creditor. They make you believe you're the debtor. See, that's why it's fiction. And you may not understand that. It may seem like craziness to you like it did to me when I first heard it. What do you mean, I didn't borrow money? I didn't have the money. Well, you didn't know you had it, but you had it. It was in your account, in your name, that they own the name that was given to you. They own that name. They own that trust account. That trust account is worth at least a million dollars and probably a whole lot more. And it is a whole lot more if you come from a middle class or upper class family. If you come from a very poor family, it may not be worth that much, depending on what country you live in. And Nasara needs to be global. It needs to be G and not N at the, at the front of it. It needs to be something that is worldwide because the, the fraud has been worldwide. And the other thing is it restores constitutional or common law. Now, now, I just read a thing yesterday put out by somebody, in a Cindy, Cindy K or somebody in South Africa, that common law is our current system. This is a total misnomer, a total misnomer. We are not under a common law system really anywhere in the world. That is, a, that is just simply not true. It is maritime admiralty law. It is Roman law. It is not British common law as this, uh, this article alleged that we are now under. Common law has maxims of law that are based on common sense, based on scriptural revelations uh, in in uh, in the Bible, in the uh, Quran, and in probably the Bhagavad Gita. I don't really know as much about the uh, the Vedas or the Bhagavad Gita or or some of the other writings. But in any case, I know that that there are biblical principles that come to light in what are termed maxims of law. Those maxims of law have been thrown out in the current system. So it's not a common law system. That is a that is just disinformation that it's a that that we're under common law. We have not been under common law in the United States since the early part of our nation. By the by the time eighteen the, after the Civil War Common law had pretty much fallen apart, although there were still elements of it. But it's been common law has been being eroded step by step by step by step gradually over time, 
And today, in the 21st century, there's no such thing as common law in our government systems, in our court systems. There's no such thing. It is not common. It is not even law. It is not even law. It's, a, it's, it's total coercion, total manipulation, it's total fraud, and that's why Nassara is important. It's a vision of actual legislation that restores the, the rights of people to the people so that our human rights are upheld. It restores the republic in the United States, for example, and in every other country on earth, and republics, bear in mind, republics are about limited government. It's about government that is derived from the consent, from the voluntary consent of the people. And it's administered by the people. And it has checks and balances that keep the government in check. It limits government. It does not allow government to become tyrannical. Isn't that the problem that we're facing? That our government is in collusion with the fraudulent banks? and the fraudulent system and so that everything in our everything in our complete society is corrupted by this this fraudulent monetary system and the fraudulent government system republics change all that and put it back where it's supposed to be so that the people it's god then the people and the government under the people what's happened in our current world is everything has been inverted turned upside down so that the government is at the top the people are underneath the government and God is irrelevant to the people that are ruling this because they are total psychopaths, sociopaths. They use religion only as a tool to control people, to make people feel guilty, to make people believe lies like this is just an illusion. It's not real. It doesn't matter. It's all manipulation. It's all a matter of trying to get people to give up their rights, to not pay attention to what's going on in the world, to the new age stuff is, is just very, very damning too. They get people to think, well, politics and spirituality don't mix, as if anything can be separate from anything else, which it can't be. This is a singular web of life, and everything and everyone is interconnected. Nothing happens independently of other things happening. Everything causes a ripple effect. And we need to awaken and reestablish certain principles that give us a chance to uh, evolve and awaken and become more than we are and move toward the potential of what we are able to become. And we are all more than we expect ourselves to be, more than we know ourselves to be. Every single one of us lives in the prison, in the cage that we don't see all too often. And then th those of us that get a chance to look at it and actually see it in our experience, as I did over the weekend, we understand even more fully what's going on. There's a lot of people that have never been threatened and have never have never had their rights uh, at the force at the threat of force at the threat of being beat up or or actually being beat up they they have no idea what it's like and they can just easily sit back and say well I'm just working on my consciousness that's not enough I'm sorry that's not enough working on your consciousness is a good thing to, to understand that everything is interconnected, but there are responsibilities. It isn't about sitting back and taking no action. It's about taking action. It's about getting involved. If we don't get involved, we are acquiescing to the current system and saying, keep running it the way that you're running it, it's okay. I mean, there's a whole lot of people that believe the current system is exactly the system that we need. We need to be under a tyranny. Why? Why do we need to be under a tyranny? To wake us up? Well, there's some of us that are awake. And we're the ones that are being attacked and fighting for other people's rights. While people that, that are wealthy sit, sit in ivory towers and they don't fight for people's rights. They don't end up turning around and funding the things that need to be funded, like Nasara, to actually replace and take out of office the people that are, that are committing the crimes against humanity. This is something that's real and it needs to be done. And it needs to be done as soon as possible. The principles of Nasara are good principles. I only I only just touched on touched on some of the, the main ones briefly. But let me tell you, 
We need to make significant changes for humanity's sake, for the sake of Mother Earth herself, for the sake of all the creatures that are being harmed by those who poison our wa water, poison our land, poison our air, even poison the very food and the and the and the the plant kingdom is and the animal kingdom. I mean, everything is being poisoned and corrupted by the current corporate system where corporations are posing as governments and posing as authorities. Legal fictions are running the world and psychopaths are, the, are the, responsible for those legal fictions. This is all a system that needs to be brought to its knees and, and shut down and it is the most spiritual thing you can do to get involved and take action and to do the inner work, to do the work that's spiritual and, and learn how to deal with some of the things that seem so horrendous. I have to do that every day. I have to go into the meditation and remind myself that I am a child of God, remind myself that I am infinite, remind myself that, uh, that I am loved, because sometimes it doesn't feel that way. And I have to remind myself of the truth behind what I'm experiencing. But I can't just simply escape the experience and say it's just an illusion. That is nonsense. It's not an illusion. It's something that people have to deal with every day. I'm all in favor of Nasara. I'm all in favor of Gasara. When it's going to be announced, I have no idea. It's been supposed to be announced a lot of times, and it never happened. At least not yet, to my knowledge. It was supposed to happen on the uh, yesterday, actually on the 9th. This is being recorded on the 10th for the 11th. But it hasn't happened yet, to my knowledge. Anyway, thank you for listening. Namaste.